Hey everyone, James Wilson here with Pelling Innovations, and today I wanted to talk about the real role of the calf on the bike, both uh, when you're pedaling and also absorbing impacts, because it's a really misunderstood thing, and, and I answer a lot of questions about uh, about this with the catalyst pedal, because with this midfoot position that the catalyst pedal lets you use, uh, it apparent it would seem that it takes away the ability for the calf in the ankle to help provide energy and also to absorb impact. But when you look at how the body actually works and the calf's actual function, you see that, that, it, that it's not true, that we're actually uh, screwing ourselves up by going to the ball of the foot. So first and foremost, uh, I guess not foremost, but first, is uh, the pedal stroke, okay? So uh, you'll hear a lot that if you're not uh, pushing through the calf, right? So when I'm pedaling, I wanna be able to push through the ankle, and if I'm not able to push my ankle and use the lever of my foot, uh, you know, particularly using my calf, then uh, I'm, I'm going to lose energy, right? Because my calf's just not doing anything. So again, if I'm pedaling my bike, the idea is that I am, uh, you know, able to use my calves to get this last little bit. So I'm pedaling and at the very end, I'm able to come up on my toes and use, uh, produce some more energy. The problem is, is that on your pedals, you're, you're, you're not, your foot isn't, uh, you need pressure on both ends of your foot in order to use your hips properly. There's a study that looked at this, right? They studied the ball of the foot versus uh, the midfoot position, and they found that there was no difference in how much energy was produced and how efficient it was. So again, people, there's science out there. Like, this isn't a question like, well, what about this? Like, they have looked at it. And again, just because the science doesn't uh, add up with what the clipless pedal industry and, and the you know trailhead expert is telling you. Uh, they ignore this stuff. But again, there was a study that looked at this, and in particular, they were trying to disprove the midfoot position. Uh, when you read it, you can see that that was the point of the study was to look at it and prove that if you aren't pushing through the ball of your foot, that you're losing out on the calf as an energy producer, and therefore you are losing energy and it's less efficient. But again, that's not what they found. But what they did find was that where the, the energy was coming from, where the, the force was being produced, was different. So again, when you're on the ball of your foot, you are using your calf more. But what you're not using as effectively are your hips. And so that's the trade-off that you're, you're making when you're on the ball of your foot. You're taking away from your hips' ability to produce uh, power and energy with the pedal stroke. And again, it makes sense. You have to have heel pressure for your hips to work properly. And so when you're perched on the ball of your foot, then there's no pressure under your heel, your hips can't work. And so, uh, but again, this idea that your calves aren't doing anything is false, right? So again, when I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm doing a, you know, either a squat or a hinge or whatever that is, like, it's not like my calf is doing nothing. My calf is stabilizing my ankle and my lower leg to allow for the force that's being produced in the hip to be transferred as efficiently as possible into the ground. That's what I want. And that's what we want on the bike too. We want a stable lower leg so that the hip energy is being transferred into the, the pedal. But when you get on the ball of the foot and you're trying to use the calf, you're able to get the calf into it more, but now the calf isn't stabilizing, right? Now the calf is acting as a prime mover. And so when you take a muscle that's supposed to be acting as a stabilizing, as, as a synergistic stabilizer, and you start treating it like a prime mover, well, it can't do both, okay? So it, it, you're, you're going to lose the ability of the calf to act as that synergistic stabilizer the way that your body wants it uh, to act. And, and so, and, and again, once you start getting it to move and it can't stabilize like it should, now you're going to lose the hips because the hips aren't going to produce as much power because your body recognizes that's an unstable foot, that's an unstable lower leg. I cannot transfer as much energy through those unstable parts, so I'm going to shut down how much force the hips are producing to protect myself. It's just how the body works, so this is the problem. You're not adding. When you start trying to do this little lever thing with your ankle, ankling, whatever the hell they call it, you're not adding to the pedal stroke. You're subtracting to the overall energy of the pedal stroke. You're subtracting from the hips and what your calves are making up uh, either isn't making up for it or it is, but you're doing it. Uh, the, the, the hips are made to produce energy. The calves 
are not made to be a prime mover like that. And so that's why you end up with so many lower leg, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendon problems, all of these, these foot and lower leg problems with people that do this ankling nonsense because they're using their, their leg in an unnatural way. And again, I'll say it again, riding your bike is not running or walking. You do push through the ball of your foot when you are running or walking, right? So if I'm jumping, running, walking, I'm pushing the ball of my foot because my center of gravity is moving through space. When my center of gravity is not moving through space, my feet stay stable, all right? I'm on a bike. When I'm on a bike, I am not going anywhere. The bike is carrying me. My foot is, is staying on top of the pedal. So this is why your foot acts more like it does when you're picking something up than when you're running or walking. It's a false analogy to, to say that you need to be on the ball of your foot for this because it's not true. Um, so anyways, the calf, that's what the calf's job is during the pedal stroke is to act as a stabilizer for the lower leg so that you can get maximum power from the hips transferred through that into the foot and into the pedal. And so that's what it's there for. So screw with it at your own discretion. Um, the other uh, thing that I hear a lot is using the ankles for shock absorption. And this is another one that drives me absolutely up the wall because it's not true. Your, hip, your, your ankles do not absorb shock. Your ankles guide your foot down to a stable position so that your hips can absorb the shock. Your hips are the main shock absorber of your lower body, all right? And so, again, like th this idea comes from when I jump, right, I jump up. And then I'm going to get my, my toes, ball of my feet are going to touch. But if you notice what happens, the ball of my feet touch, I immediately get my heels down. As soon as my heels touch, my hips absorb the energy. I'm not absorbing energy with my ankles. Here's the other problem with this thought. If you watch me do a broad jump, okay, I don't land on the balls of my feet. I do a broad jump, I land on my heels, and then I do it opposite. Instead of going ball to heel and use my hips, I go heel to ball and then use my hips. So if, if your ankles are used for shock absorption and you, you have to land on your ankle, your, the ball of your foot, to absorb shock, then you would do it all the time. But again, I just showed you a broad jump. You don't. You land on your heel. So obviously it's, it's, it's false. It's not true. It's cherry picking at one or two instances where you land on the ball of your foot first and then saying, see, this is how you always do it and drawing these, these ridiculous analogies and comparisons from these isolated things that have nothing to do with what we're doing on the bike. So again, what you're doing, you want to get the, the heel pressure, you want to get the foot stabilized so that your body can use the hips to absorb the energy. And so if you're trying to uh, uh, do that on the ball of your foot, it, it's really hard to do. You're not able to do it as effectively, right? So, and again, just so if, if you're telling me like, okay, you can use your ankles, but no hips, right? So I jump and I land with my ankles. Oh, like that is hard. I need my hips. If you tell me I jump and I can't land with my ankles, I got to land flat footed, but I can use my hips. Okay. Like my hips are absorbing the impact, not my ankles. All right. So this ridiculousness that, that God, it's, it's, it's just, it's an infection especially in the skills training industry, to tell people that they need to be on the balls of their feet to absorb impacts and for agility when the opposite is true. The opposite is true. When you're on the balls of your feet, it makes it harder to absorb impact. It makes it harder for you to be agile on your bike. And so, uh, again, like looking at, um, you know, looking at like a, uh, like a swing motion, right? This is absorbing energy when I'm doing a swing motion. If I've got a kettlebell and I'm doing this, I'm not using my ankles. My ankles are not being used to absorb this impact. My hips are being used, okay? Again, if I didn't move my hips, bam, impact. This is going to hurt. I got to use my hips. So again, if, if my ankles are essential to absorbing impact, then they would always be essential to absorbing impact. Otherwise, they're only essential to absorbing impact in specific circumstances. And then we have to look at those circumstances and do they – are they like what we're doing on the bike? And the answer is no. They're not like what we're doing on the bike because, again, because our foot doesn't come off the pedal. This is why we're more like skateboarders or surfers, right? If you watch a skateboarder getting ready to land a big freaking you know, jump in a, a 15, 20 foot uh, stair set, get ready to land flat, he's not sitting there flying through the air on his board like this. You know what I mean? He's trying to get his feet down so he can absorb. 
He needs to have his heels down as quickly as possible. The same thing with surfers, man. You watch these guys, skiers, uh, snowboarders. These are all athletes that are, are absorbing impact and doing agile athletic movement with, without being on the ball of their foot. Okay, so this idea that you need to be on the ball of your foot for to absorb impact is absolutely false. It makes it harder. Try doing kettlebell swings, balance on the balls of your feet. It doesn't work. So again, you see, like it, it, it's not. Uh, it, it's just a false analogy. Now, the last thing I'm going to touch on real quick because this is another one that drives me nuts. I've seen this particularly from a couple of skills coaches uh, talking about how putting people on the ball of their foot helps them hinge better. Again. This is from people who don't understand what they're looking at, uh, talking too much, all right? So if I have someone, and I want them to hinge, all right? I want them to get down into this attack position. I can do this on flat feet, right? But if I have someone who's locked up in the hips, okay? They don't really understand how to move from their hips. And I tell them to get on the balls of their feet, so that they, they balance on the balls of their feet. You can see automatically, like if I do nothing from here up, I'm gonna keep tilting forward, okay? My body has to compensate. It has to, it has to do something to remain balanced. So if I go on the ball to my feet, oh, I've triggered this compensatory hinge. Now it's, you know, I'm on the balls of my feet and I can sit back into this hinge, right? I can't quite get full hip extension. It's not as powerful. But if I don't understand how to move properly and I'm dealing with a coach who doesn't understand how to help me move properly, then he can easily just say, get on the balls of your feet Oh, look at you, you're hinging, you're able to sit back into it easier. Look at that, we helped your body position because you, you needed to be on the, on the balls of your feet and being midfoot made it harder for you to hinge, which again, is ridiculous. It's, it's absolutely not true. So, uh, you know, again, hopefully, I've at least stirred some thought uh, among some people or at least, you know, people who know this stuff, giving you guys some better ammunition for having to deal with this because, again, it's a very common question that people are going to uh, get, you know, and get my, uh, you know, with the catalyst pedal because, again, I'm not on the ball of my foot, right? I'm in the midfoot position. And, again, this is the funny thing, too. It's not like my ankle can't move, right? My foot can still move and articulate. My ankle can still bend. It's not like it's just stuck, right? So I, I don't know where, again, this idea that, like, you can't use your ankles for anything. I can still use my ankles uh, to uh, with this platform. It's a rotating platform, so it rotates. Um, but anyways... The, the midfoot position, getting the, the stability under both ends of the arch is going to help your hips function better. Your hips are the powerhouse of the lower body for the pedal stroke. They are the main absorber, the, your, your main shock absorber, and they're uh, where you want to move from on the bike. And so you want to make sure that you have your foot in a position to where your hips are able to function properly. And that's only possible if you're stabilizing both ends of the arch. So going to the ball of the foot creates a ton of problems. And again, it's, it's been perpetuated by people who don't know what they're looking at. They don't understand movement. They don't understand how it applies to the bike. It's just an echo chamber where they're just repeating stuff over and over and over again. And dude, again, studies have looked at some of this stuff. Uh, movement principles tell us some, you know, uh, uh, point us in directions. And so this, this stuff's out there, people. You just have to look at it and uh, um, be open to it, uh, I guess, in case it goes against what you think you already know. So anyways, hopefully this clears some stuff up. Um, you guys got any questions on this? You can leave them in the comments. I'll come back and answer them. Also, uh, hit me up at james at pellinginnovations.com. Be happy to answer any questions there. But uh, yeah, get off the balls of your feet, people. Get that midfoot position. Get your foot stabilized properly open up the potential for your, your lower body and your hips to really work the way that it's supposed to on the bike, and it'll totally change your riding experience. So get off those tiny pedals, man. We're not ballerinas. Um, but anyways, so that's it. I'll uh, talk to everybody next time.